I remember also Anas ibn Malik, and whenever I hear his name, an, I pay particular attention because he was always close to the Messenger of Allah, always with him. He said, I served him for 10 years, and so there are things that we learn from Anas ibn Malik that we don't learn from other people. And so when Anas ibn Malik said, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yakul, that the Messenger of Allah used to say, and he used to make this dua, Allahumma inni a'udhbika min jubni. Allah, oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from being a coward. And this is a dua that we have to make. We seek refuge with Allah from being a coward. And we want to be like Prophet Dawood alayhi salat wa salam. And the Prophet said, La ya, la ya, la ya, firru, la, la, la ya firru, idha laqa. He never ran when he met, faced the enemy. And we want to be like that. We want to be like those great Sahaba. When I read where the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salat wa salam participated in 19 ghazwats, 19 battles of his life. Most of us sitting here never even been in a fight. Most of us don't know how would we respond if somebody come to attack us. But we want to be like the Messenger of Allah and those great Sahaba who fought in the great battle of Badr and the great battle of Uhud and all those great battles. Some of them gave their lives that Islam can live and they didn't run away from the battle. We're not asking you to pick up guns and we're not asking you to throw bombs at anyone. But we are asking you to be brave and to be courageous. How do you be courageous? Number one, you ask Allah for it. Seek refuge with Allah from being a coward. Wow. 
ويقودهم نحو المعالي قودها ألف الصعاب ما تيسهل عندهم فرع الكتائب والتلاحم والدماء ملك الفؤاد ما دروا يا ويحهم أن الفؤاد بهم يهيم متيما سكنوا شغاف القلب ليس لهم به غير الشغاف تفضلا وتكرما إن أطرقوا ملأ النفوس تفترا يتلذذون ببذلهم ويرونه حقا أكيدا للإله ومغنما لا تنظمن قصيدة في مدحهم أعف لاحف أن تقول القيمما لكن حسبك بعض ما قاموا به سطر بحجز السيف والخل قال ما لكن حسبك بعض ما قاموا به الخوف المحرم the prohibited type of fear الخوف المحرم and this is also considered by uh, some scholars as shirk al-asghar small shirk this type of fear stops one from doing ordains or committing prohibitions fear that stops you from doing an ordain or refraining from doing uh, 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 from, from uh, refrain from doing a wajib or getting you to do a muharram. And this is what is short of shirk. He fears that he'll make salah on time, for example, because uh, people will mock him in public places. He fears to grow a beard because he fears the employer will fire him. Uh, he fears to grow a beard because uh, he doesn't want to get scrutinized or delayed at airports. Uh, he, didn't, he was in a setting where people were listening to music. He didn't want to tell them that music is haram because he didn't want to be a, a singled out, criticized, or outcast. He let his clothes go below the ankle because he didn't want to look differently or he didn't want people to point fingers at him or mock him. He didn't speak the truth and stand up for his brothers and sisters who desperately need him because he didn't want to be labeled as a radical or extremist. This is the type of fear... That's in the verse. الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَاخْشَوْهُمْ فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا 
وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ The believers were told, this was after the battle, uh, that the, the Muslims thought, verily the pagans have gathered against you a great army, so fear them. They gathered another army to fight you again. The hypocrites always come at you. Don't speak about prisoner rights. Don't forbid the evil. Uh, the, the West and their governments will tap your phone. When it was told to the Sahaba something of that similar nature, فخشوهم زادهم فزادهم إيمان It increased them in faith. And they said, Allah is sufficient for us and we put our trust in Allah. وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ The following verse tells, إِنَّمَا ذَلِكُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ Those who scare you, they're the devils. It's only the shaytan that suggests to you to fear his awliya, the awliya of shaytan. Some considered this category of fear as haram because it gets you to leave some ordains or it gets you to do some prohibitions for fear of other than Allah. Some ulama considered it small shirk. Because of the hadith in Musad Ahmad, and it really possibly depends on the heart feeling in this. It's between haram and small shirk. Because of the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Allah tells a servant on the day of judgment, why didn't you deter from the evil? And he says, oh Allah, I feared people. Allah says, replies to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you should have feared me. Inna Allah yaqulu lil abdi yawm al qiyamah. ما منعك إذا رأيت المنكر لا تغيره فيقول رب خشيت الناس فيقول الله إياي كنت أحق أن تخشى He feared the people and he said and he admitted to Allah feared people Allah said you should have feared me Aside from manipulating the story to fit their desire and to compromise on the principles of the deen of Allah, they raised a generation of cowards in constant surrenderous mode. A generation aside from deviating in aqidah, they have no qualities of manhood, no ghira on the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or on the principles of this deen or on the haram or the halal. A generation of indiqahiyin, without ikrah, without duress, without the slightest scrutiny, you'll find them constant laying on their stomach in surrenderous mode to the enemies of Allah. Indiqahiyin. Take wala imbara out of the curriculum. They'll downplay it. Then they'll taint and dilute its meaning. Then they'll justify it for the tawaghi and they'll justify all their actions as well with it. Interfaith is haram, but when it's opened down in Mecca, the by the tawafi, they downplay it and dig around and find a way out for them. Sharia of Allah is replaced. It's not a biggie, they'll find a way around for it. Muslim women raped or massacres of, of Muslims, the Imam didn't allow us to defend them. They're khawarij and they deserve what they got. There's not an ounce of manhood or ghira in them. And that's aside from the deviance in their aqidah. The moderns, the murjia, the mumayya, the zanadiqa, and those who branch out from them. Izza is a concept in our deen, so essential that Izza, with its derivatives, is mentioned in the Quran approximately 140 times in various contexts. اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الهم والحزن وأعوذ بك من العجز والكسل وأعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل وأعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال The dua is اللهم اكفنيهم بما شئتا Now being fearful of people is something that happens sometimes and someone might be out there to harm you or you might be fearful of a group of people and there's a very specific dua for that 
In fact, the Prophet ﷺ told us about this dua in the story of the boy and the king. And this is the story where uh, the boy uh, at first was taken to the king, uh, to the king's magician and sorcerer to learn from him. And then later on he met a rahib, a man who was worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He taught him about Allah and he became a believer. Then he challenged the king. And he challenged the king and the king's claim that he is God and he should be worshipped. The king, of course, then said to the boy that he must renounce his faith or he will kill him. The boy was taken to a mountain and he was told to renounce his faith or he will be killed. It is at this moment when he was desperate for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he said this dua. Allahumma kfinihim bima shi'ta. Oh Allah, protect from me these people as you wish. Or protect me as you wish. Allah says in the Quran, is Allah not enough for his servant? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved that young boy. As the mountain started shaking and the assailants fell off and he was saved. On them shall be no fear nor shall they grieve. Don't get stressed out Muslims over things that haven't happened yet. That's fear. And don't get stressed out over things that's already happened. Everything has been decreed. The most difficult pill for the Muslims to swallow is article number six of our deen, the qadr of Allah. We don't want to admit it. We have to give each other a reminder. Allah gave us the name insan. Insan literally translated means the creature that has to be reminded. Because out of everything that Allah created, we're the only one that forgets. We forget about the power of Allah. We forget about the presence of Allah. We forget that we came from a clot and we were nothing. And yet we look down on others. We come to Juma prayer every single week and many times sit next to the same brother or sit to the, next to the same sister and never even ask their name. We don't care with the prophet that taught us how to love and continues to teach us and correct us to this day. The prophet that had the least amount to work with, but the biggest job of all the prophets combined. He had to teach us and still teaches us, read the sirah, Achi. He has to teach us how to wear our clothes, how long, how short, how to wear our beard, how to laugh, how to cry, how long to cry, how loud to laugh, how to drink water, how to drink milk, what to say before we go to bed, what to say when we wake up, subhanAllah. How to please our wives, how to teach our children, when to pray, when not to pray, how to break our fast. Every single thing he had to correct. All the other prophets had a specific task or a specific group of people to talk to and a specific thing that they had to correct. Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to correct everything because we weren't doing anything right, including how to respect and love each other and we get so afraid because we forget. We fear and we forget that Allah is in control. This note is about to take on an adversary 10 times its size. It's too dangerous to rush straight in. Instead, the stoat's aim is to wear the rabbit down. The rabbit is flagging and the stoat's stamina is starting to make a difference. But stamina alone is not enough. The rabbit must still be overpowered.
a bite to the back of the neck, and a kill. The incredible agility of the stoat, practiced since it was a kit, was just enough to swing the balance. Big bellies? <laughs> we don't need them kind of people. Because the companions of the Prophet Wasallam, they was not like that. I don't know why, but as I'm reading the seerah, I did not find many of the companions of the Prophet Wasallam like that. <laughs> Even the Messenger of Allah Wasallam, did you know that after he was 40 years old, he fought all those battles after the age of 40? And did you know that he fought in at least 17 major battles after he was over the age of 50. That means he was carrying on his body 14 kilos of armor where the sun was like 36 degrees Celsius. Up and down mountains riding on a horse, riding on a camel, riding on a donkey, and then fighting in the battles. How could he have done that if he was like that? <laughs> no, the Prophet Sallallahu wasn't eating a whole lot, of, whole lot of whatever it is that we eat. The companions of the Prophet Sallallahu they was lean, tough, hard men. And most of them who were fighting, they already was over 40, 45, and 50 years old. I ask you this, what can the 45, 50 year old men in this room do? <laughs> if I told you to run back home and come back here, you couldn't do it. In Mecca, we were standing in Mecca one day. MashaAllah, the Saudis had won the, uh, the, uh, they had won the finals for the, the, the World Cup or something. They didn't win the World Cup, they just got to the finals. You know what the World Cup, you guys know what it is. And so they was all running, all the young guys were all running through the streets and everything like they had fought the war, beat the Yahudis and everybody. <laughs> they were blowing horns and waving the Saudi flag and on the back of their cars. I thought, man, man maybe, they had just, maybe they just took Jerusalem back. <laughs> I said, what are they doing? They, they, they won the finals of the, of the World Cup. Some football. So you got the young boys kicking the ball through the streets and the old men sitting up on the side of the road with the ball in their bellies. <laughs> so then what can young boys kicking a ball and the men who swallowed the ball, what can they do? <laughs> now it's not really a joke. It is sad, it is tragic that we don't have young men who have the spirit of jihad or vigilance, or defense, or consciousness, or discipline, because they're playing games. And we don't have old men to govern those and guide those. We don't have the old men to govern and guide and to be the examples for those people. You get the separation there. And so what I meant by that, I'm giving an analogy, really, that we have two separate groups that itself we need to change. لكن البشر كثيرا وهم يقدرون حساباتهم يغفلون قوة العظمى التي تدير الكون ويرجع إليها الأمر كله ولله غيب السماوات والأرض وإليه يرجع الأمر كله فاعبده وتوكل عليه وما ربك بغافل عما تعملون يغفلون وهم يحسبون حساباتهم البشرية والدنيوية قول الله عز وجل أليس الله بكاف عبده بلى أليس الله بكاف عبده بلى ويخوفونك بالذين من دونه القوة العظمى ويخوفونك بالذين من دونه 
ومن يضلل الله فما له من هاد ومن يهد الله فما له من مضل أليس الله بعزيز ذي انتقام بل الناس يتغافلون عن هذه القضية ولا تجد على ألسنة المسلمين يرددون سوى كيف قام الفعل الفلاني وأمريكا غير راضية وكيف نجح الفعل الفلاني وروسيا غاضبة وكأنها أصبحت تعالى الله عما يظنون علوا كبيرا كأن أمريكا وروسيا أصبحت إلها من دون الله سبحانه لماذا؟ لأن الله لا يغلب الله لا يهزم قوته لا تذل وهذا الذي غاب عن أذهان القوى الكبرى وعن أذهان الذين يدورون في فلك القوى الكبرى حتى غابت عن أذهان كثير من المسلمين الطيبين نعم الله أعراد أن يثبت للأمة المسلمة أني أنا القوي الجبار المتكبر أن أي شعب مسلم مهما كان ضعيفا أميا فقيرا إذا جاهد ودافع عن دينه فالله ينصره I don't know about him or anybody else. If he's if he has no um, kind of relationship with our law or anything, I feel nothing. You know what I mean? Him, gun, mafia, whoever. I don't feel nobody. I really want to show him right now, but we have a couple of days to wait. Nobody.